And the Miss Cosmo sashing ceremony finally took place yesterday. And I was so surprised it took place yesterday, honestly, considering that the organization had said that it would postpone the initial key events like the welcome ceremony, etc., because of the super typhoon that hit Vietnam a week, a week ago. So I thought the organization would focus on doing more charity work in its first week to avoid criticism. So I was really surprised that the sashing ceremony took finally happened yesterday. I only got to know about this event just yesterday afternoon and immediately looked for a live stream on its social media pages. But apparently, there was none. So I just had to rely on Sash Factor photographer Conrad Ong and some of the fans who live streamed the event in their respective social media accounts. So there, diba? So when I finally watched it, I was also stunned to see at the simplicity of the event given it was just held in the ballroom with a bare minimum stage setup. Either it was rushed or intentionally toned down in light of the recent calamity that happened, there must be a compelling reason for this. And I think it may have to do in being one, insensitive with the typhoon victims affected. So what about you guys? Ano sa tingin Do you think Miss Cosmo is doing the right thing now in toning or scaling down its activity so far? Well, let me know in the comment section be below because I also want to hear your feedback. But you know what, guys? Regardless of what we feel at the moment, I have to commend the Miss Cosmo organization for still coming out with their very best in everything that they have been doing despite the snag brought out by the super typhoon recently. They, nakita niyo naman, they still have been churning out content and they still have been churning out content relentlessly on their social media pages, trying its best to feature and give equal exposure as much as possible to all the ladies to all the ladies involved. And nakita niyo naman, even their hair and makeup team is so so impressive. They are really trying to learn to roll with the punches. So I guess yeah. That could be it. But nevertheless, it still really did not dampen me to watch the whole proceedings. And here I am about to review my top 11 ladies who stood out during this particular event. Despite the noticeably toned down scale of the event, all ladies showed up looking like red carpet royalty. So which ladies stood out during this event? Well, here are now my top 11 picks for the Miss Cosmo 2024 sashing ceremony. So I've got 11 ladies in my list and number 11 on my list is Anastasia Panova from Ukraine. Oh, another knockout beauty we have here and I love how this lady has found herself competing in another Vietnamese-based pageant. She placed in the top 20 of the inaugural edition of Miss Charm last year, and so she has been looking more and more confident with her turns here in Miss Cosmo. Now, she just looks stunning in this see-through dress, but siguro if there is something I would like to nitpick about her turn here is that I wish she could have opted for a sleek hairstyle or a coif bun to match the beauty of her gown, as this has been the same hairstyle that she has been wearing since arriving in Vietnam. So I wish, so I hope in the next few days, she could learn to experiment more with hair styling, specifically with her hair. And now we go to my 10th spot and I'm giving it to Samantha Elliott from USA. Oh, this lady is such a pleasant surprise in this year's competition. Now she just looks so statuesque as she introduced herself on stage. She wore a sexy pink gown and I must say, she really shone with her strong stage presence. And it really helps that she is tall, so all the more she is really standing out on stage. As in, beauty queen na beauty queen talaga ang tindig niya. And her soft curls making her all the more look feminine on stage. And I'm glad that she chose this kind of styling for her because if you check all her photos on Instagram, her photos, napansin nyo, have been too strong and heavily edited heavily edited but when we finally saw her in person and in motion she really stunned me to no end and now we go to my ninth spot and i'm giving it to hazel datser from bolivia another lady who is looking smashing in her turn during the sashing ceremony grabe miss bolivia hazel caught my attention too just with her captivating charm and presence at first glance i at, at first glance i thought i was seeing a I, was, I thought I was seeing a young version of former Miss Universe title holder Lupita Jones. Or maybe it's just the styling that she had here during the event. But she really looks good. 
She just looks so luminous in this blue beaded gown despite wearing it for the second time around. The first one during her nationals. So talk about being fa fashionably sustainable. And of course, I like how she is so unmindful of any criticism that would be coming her way that she repeated her outfit. But I thought she was just, you know, probably towing, yeah, towing the line of fashion sustainability here. And the impact that she, that she generated on stage has not really diminished. Just one little difference though, kung napansin nyo, notice how she put her hair here in a bun this time around so that we can appreciate the beauty of her face. The thing I like about her turn here is that she tried to experiment on her hair by giving us something different because she has been wearing her hair down all the time in all her photo shoots so far. And now we go to my eighth spot and I'm giving it to Melody Murguia from Mexico. Another Latina who caught my attention here. Melody just looks so stunning in this pink long sleeve gown which, with intricate pattern. And what I like about this is, is that it looked like a Vietnamese audai. <laughs> yeah, Vietnam's national dress. Plus, diba? Plus her hair here na talagang the way she put it up. And I don't know if she must have thought about this, but it really worked on her favor. How she incorporated that subtle Audi reference to her sense of style here, plus how, yeah, as I've said, how she put her hair up to make her look more elegant is really a good testament to how she has been doing her homework for this pageant. I actually can't wait what she has in store for us soon in this pageant. And now we go to my seventh spot and I'm giving it to Maria Alejandra Salazar from Colombia. She's definitely one of the much anticipated ladies in this year's competition and I just feel underwhelmed with Maria Alejandra styling here in this particular event. She has been in everyone's top picks to win the title and even made a huge splash when she wore an Audi in her arrival. But I feel this green frock did not do any justice to her beautiful face and body. And I feel, so I feel it just aged her even more. That was her hair was not complementing her gown choice here too, which I feel is also ill-fitting. Nevertheless, this lady is still a contender and I hope she can bounce back from this. And now we go to my sixth spot and I'm giving it to Mukta Sabut from Thailand. I must admit, I have been underwhelmed by her beauty since her placement in Miss Universe Thailand pageant last July. But gosh, this girl has been wowing me since her arrival, since her arrival in Vietnam. Her departure outfit for Vietnam was really grand. She was draped in gold from head to toe, make us, making us feel that she is really serious to win this year's competition. But for the sashing ceremony days after, I love how she toned it down with just a clean look by wearing a yellow fitted gown that showcased her curves with a hairband to accentuate her, the beauty of her face. Now she really looked impeccable from head to toe. No one can really dispute Talaga her country when it comes to styling its girls. Hands down. And now we go to my top five and number five on my list. Here is In Likena from Cambodia. This lady has strong stage presence and I just love how she looks like a diva fixing her hair as soon as the sash was put on her. She just looks so fierce and imposing on stage and still looking poised and commanding while she was going down after. And I can't believe that she has this cute tiny voice envelope in that beautiful body. So notice the contrast that she has here. Cutesy with her voice but looking like a mighty diva with her act actuations on stage. So, nakakatawa. Hope, so, it's she's intriguing me. So, hopefully, she can modulate her voice to appear more commanding and threatening on stage. And now, we go to my fourth spot and I'm giving it to... Surprise! Huwag kayong magagalit sa akin. Atisa Manalo from the Philippines. As the mega favorite to win the inaugural edition of Miss Cosmo, all eyes are definitely on our very own Atisa. Na talagang inaabangan na talaga natin siya ng malala in every turn and thing she does in the ongoing pageant. And I must say, uh, she was so clever to collaborate with Vietnamese designer Le Tan Hoa with this floral-inspired dress. The, gustong gusto ko talaga yung design ng dress na to. The cascading petal design in this sheer tool fabric made it so feminine and easy to the eyes to appreciate. And Atisa just looks so stunning in it. 
How I wish, though, the dress was customized for her because she was visibly struggling while carrying the gown. Pero the pageant veteran out of Atisa truly powered through in this moment as she worked the gown towards the end. And despite the struggle, she still gave a huge smile towards the end, making us feel so relieved she did not trip with the long hem at the back. So as, just, as much as I am wowed by the details of Atisa's gowns here, I have to grade her here with her showmanship. Hence, she struggled a bit, and that's why I'm ranking her only at my number four spot here in this event. If this was just a red carpet event and she wore this, I would not have minded at all because, you know, because that will, that will really restrict her movement. And hopefully, so hopefully, Atisa could go back to wearing a customized gown so it won't compromise her performance next time. Nevertheless, I love the risk and collaboration that she took here. I just wish it was a calculated one. And now we go to my top three and number three on my list here is Romina Lozano from Peru. After going and place in Miss Universe 2018, do you still remember her guys? Yeah, she was Miss Peru back in Miss Universe 2018. This lady is back with a vengeance in Miss Cosmo. I know age, if you know, see her now, I know age has already caught up with her, but my gosh, I am really amazed at how this lady has looked so neat and fresh with all her OOTDs and styling since arriving in Vietnam for this pageant. Highlighted by her stunning gold gown with huge cutout sleeves that truly brought out the elegance and sophisticate or the queenliness in her. Now she really glowed and looked imposing on stage. It's like a different Romina we have seen that we have seen far from her previous international pageant. And I really appreciate that. People who want to improve and strive harder really deserve second chances. And Romina is really a beautiful example of it. What, so, diba, seeing her now, wow, Romina, what is the secret to your inner glow here? I am definitely interested about your beauty regimen here. And now we go to my second placer of this list, and I'm giving it to... Ketut Permata Julia Street from Indonesia. Wow, this lady has grown leaps and bounds during her introduction in Miss Cosmo. And I am absolutely stunned at how Tata has managed to capture the audience with her inner sophistication and elegance in this beautiful embroidered halter gown with, with, with a pink draping, which apparently pala is a nod to the beauty of her country's islands. And the pink draping too on the bodice even gave it a more majestic feels. Her gown definitely showcased the beauty of her culture as evidenced by the refinement of her movement on stage. Plus, her updo hair here complemented this overall look. Wow, she really floored me and did not expect this impact that this lady could bring in the competition right now. She is really slowly becoming a contender for the crown. And finally, we go to my number one overall pick for this round. And I'm giving it to, surprise, Frankie Russell from New Zealand. Yes, a Filipina is still topping my list for this round. And just like Miss Indonesia, I did not expect Frankie would register so strong during the sashing ceremony yesterday. Now she just looked impeccably styled from head to toe in this silver crystallized gown made by Louis Pangilinan, which showcased her curves further. The gown totally complemented her sexiness, and I feel this could really alre this could already be her gown for the finals, as she truly as she was truly winning in so many ways than one last night, especially with that gorgeous face. Like, parang Celeste Cortez lang talaga yung atake niya dito na dinadaan lang talaga tayo sa face with that effortless smile, charm, and beauty. And I'm so happy to be putting her in this list. This is so high in my list right now because this is totally unexpected as she keeps us proving her critics wrong. The beauty about following Frankie's journey here is we see her evolving as a human being, capable of doing a great reinvention of herself at her age right now. And I am just realizing this now. Miss Cosmo could be her reinvention to remake her life, her career, to bring back her true purpose and potential in this world. And her path to reinvention is one that involves challenging either one's self-doubt. And in Frankie's case, 
all the decisions, struggles, achievements, disappointments, and even heartaches have made her the valuable person that she is now and even qualify for the next big thing in the cosmos. What do you think? So there you go, guys. What do you think about my list? Actually, marami pa akong mga girls na talagang natipuhan like Dominican Republic, India, Guatemala, South Africa, Brazil. So, what do you think about my list? Does this list match yours? Well, feel free to share your opinion down below so makita ko naman din ang mga comment nyo if we are on the same page about these girls or not. Alright guys, until my next video, bye-bye!